G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome back aboard the FA-18C Hornet. It is nice to be back home and flying again and well the reason I'm bringing out the F-18 today is because at this point I'm sure you've already seen the unboxing video. I have a new HOTAS to test and it's designed around the Hornet so best to start on the aircraft it's designed for. That being said I am probably going to have the Viper up on the channel within the next couple of days. So anyways, what are we doing in today's video? Well, this is just a standard combat air patrol. This is actually one of the sort of little missions that I've built for myself. It's not something that I ever really plan to share, but it's a good little practice mission, and it's not overly difficult for you to build one of these yourself in the mission editor. It's pretty straightforward. Essentially what this is, is a straight combat air patrol down past Dubai, on the Persian Gulf map. I selected this area basically because it's really pretty and nice to fly over, no real other reason. So from there, when you take off, you trigger an enemy spawn. Now there's three potential spawns that can pop up. It is purely random, so you'll have no idea at the start of the mission, or I'll have no idea at the start of the mission, which one I'm actually going to get. The only thing I do know, because I made the mission, is that you're either going to get three MiG-23s, three MiG-29s, or three SU-27s. To add to the randomness, the enemy aircraft AI level is also set to random, so I don't know whether I'm going to get aces or idiots or a mix of the two. I won't actually find that out until after I engage them. And it really would have been nice if there was an option to be able to randomize their loadouts. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to work out how to do that, so all the enemy aircraft are set with a pretty standard medium-range combat air patrol loadout. Nothing particularly special about it at all. So, anyways, that's what I'll be encountering. At the time of taking off, I have no idea what I'm going to fight. I just know there's going to be a three ship out there somewhere that I'm going to have to get into a tangle with. And that's all there is to it. The whole point is, of course, that it's a very easy practice mission that is very easy to repeat. That does, for the most part, give me a fairly random result each time I roll it out. So, it's pretty good all overall. Anyways, so for this flight I'm spending most of my time sort of getting used to the HOTAS. I'm not overly talkative. This was recorded not long after getting home and not long after doing that uh, unboxing video actually, so I'm still a little bit knackered. But uh, you guys have never complained about me not being overly talkative before, so I think that'll be perfectly fine. Anyways guys, hope you enjoy. I really wish there was a way I could stop it from doing that. Just because I've hit air to air mode does not mean I want the radar on the right hand side and the stores on the left. I would like to still have the RWR up, please. I'm going to have to go and edit my uh, file as well, so this, uh, this configuration is always in for countermeasures. Alright, cool. There we go, speed's picking up. It's flying a little slow. It's not back yet. Sixteen and a half. All right. As long as we hit 20 by waypoint 1, we should be fine. Which we'll do easily. Ah, here it comes. Alright, so wingman's almost here. God, that's pretty. I really do love this map. I really do love the detail that Eagle Dynamics puts into their maps. But I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to Flight Simulator 2020 and what we've seen of that so far. Right, come on, slow into formation. 
But yeah, the, the latest trailer of that looks absolutely stunning. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have some pretty, um, some functional multiplayer in it, so... Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to doing some civilian flights, especially with the detail that they're getting into the, um, get, getting into the environment, and getting into each of the localized areas, how the algorithms building cities, even cities that would normally be ignored in a flight simulator, are getting um, fairly, you know, fairly accurate to real life finishes. I was reading the reports from the first people that got to um, go and actually play it themselves and basically got free reign to go almost anywhere they wanted to go and they were able to fly over their own house and because of the way the satellite data and the algorithm is actually working on the maps they could see their own house and they could clearly see their own garden as it was and all the colours were right and their neighbour's place was right. You know. The only bit I've been a bit disappointed with, so far, is that apparently there's not going to be any rotary wings, so no helicopters, and an environment like that, that is so detailed, that's a damn shame. I'd love to just, you know, fly a helicopter around Melbourne or Sydney at low altitudes. Like that, that would just make me bloody happy, but... Okay... The clouds look much better too. Eagle Dynamics, you really need to work on your clouds. Thousand. Then we're lined up so we can start dropping the nose here. All right, and then we'll go to uh, altitude hold once we're at thirty thousand and start looking for targets. So somewhere along this route we're going to run into three enemy aircraft. We have four AIM-9Xs and we have four spam rams. So long range engagement first if at all possible, see so if we can take out all three aircraft. If we are unable to do so, um, or we have to go evasive and it gets close, we switch to the AIM-9Xs and duke it out. So 30,000 feet should give us a pretty good advantage to start with. The scope is here at this altitude. Meet 29 on scope. Two MiG 29s on scope. than that, but I'm worried they might be outside of 80 at the moment, maybe. Antenna adjustment wheel on the throttle is fantastic, by the way. Group tight. Really wish it wouldn't do that. Oh, the 
contrailing at this altitude and I'm not seeing any contrails. So they have to be below us. Oh, wait. We have one of you bastards. That's nearly on altitude. Slightly lower. 25,000 feet, give or take. And it's heading straight on at us. I know where the contacts are. There we go, no escape. Fox 3. Alright. Shift targets. Come on, find me the next one. You are not one that I've walked. Alright, Fox 3. Fox. Yep, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. There we go, that's what I want to hit. He's down, and that's another wreck. Oh, this might almost be a clean sweep. Oh shit, I should have... Ah. Wasted the last one. He called the splash. Ah, oh, well. Alright. Well, that's three for three. Pretty sure the first two were dead there from the opening salvo, and yeah, the wingman got the third one. So, two to me, one to the wingman. And that is home fuel. Yep, fair enough, we're done here, so that's uh, shift waypoints. And um, we might cut back over Dubai to get on our return trip. This shows how devastating the AMRAM is, isn't it? And I was firing relatively close, and I could have engaged from a much longer range if I wanted to. I just wanted to make sure they could not run. And that's the difference for anybody who hasn't flown the Hornet or just watches the videos. When you see shoot above the box, the weapon is in range. When shoot is in f uh, when shoot is flashing. It's um, it's no escape range. It means that at that point, if that aircraft turns around, was to fire all the throttles and run as fast as it could, it is still not going to outrun that missile. So it either has to evade it via a combination of maneuvers or countermeasures, or it dies. Alright, so back to the post commentary and in for landing, and a pretty straightforward landing here, nothing too important to talk about. Total flight time for the mission was around 45 minutes, give or take. 
with the combat portion of the mission taking up about two minutes, which is actually pretty accurate to how long an air-to-air -air engagement would actually run in real life. The weapons are that lethal and that efficient now. At the two minute point, either somebody's dead, or both parties have decided that this is just not something they want to be doing this day and have bugged out and disengaged. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. As always, check the video description down below for links to my social media, my Twitch, my Discord, my Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel, my Magsware store if you'd like to check out some cool aviation merch. Not necessarily YouTuber merch, I try and design my stuff so that it's not necessarily linked to the channel, but is definitely linked to aircraft in general. And of course, DCS will be returning to the channel very soon. In fact, the next mission is probably going to be something involving the Viper. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember to click that like button if you did, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, take care.